Hi, my name is David Markham and I'm a technical manager with Tarmac. Roller compacted concrete or simply RCC isn't new, having a long history of use overseas and sporadic use in the UK over recent years. What's likely to change this position is the introduction of RCC options into UK road specifications. RCC is a high strength zero slump cement bound mixture which forms the main structural layer in a road. It's laid and compacted with broadly standard highway pavers and rollers. The recent update to design manual for roads and bridges and specification for highway works introduced RCC base options for roads under a 90 millimeter thick asphalt overlay. In this video, I'll give an overview of RCC in terms of options for use in pavements, the constituents of a typical RCC, details of the design procedure for RCC pavements and highways, and the production and installation processes for RCC. So RCC isn't new and has been widely used overseas in both highway and industrial pavement applications. Until now, the use in the UK has been limited mostly to industrial pavements, but this is in the process of changing because of the introduction into both DMRB and SHW. Many of you will be aware that Highways England recently undertook a fundamental review of all parts of DMRB and in the process revised and republished HD 2606 pavement design as CD 226. The most significant technical update in 226 was probably the introduction of RCC as a structural base option. Like traditional flexible composite pavements, the RCC needs an asphalt overlay largely because it isn't a high speed running surface. But RCC is used on its own as an industrial pavement. The RCC material specification to support CD226 was added to the SHW 1000 series as part of the January 2020 revision. And if you want more information, then both DMRB and SHW documents can be accessed on the Standards for Highways website. CD226 doesn't allow RCC to be placed on an unbound Class 2 foundation. It must have a bound Class 3 or Class 4 foundation. The minimum thickness of RCC is 165 millimetres and increases with the design traffic to a maximum of 200 millimetres on class three or 180 millimetres on class four foundations. Like CBGM base, RCC has to be pre-caract, but at two and a half metres, not three metre centres, and mustn't be trafficked within seven days of laying. RCC must be paved in a single layer. The asphalt overlay to RCC is a fixed 90 millimetres, so it doesn't vary with traffic loading like it does with flexible composite pavements. This is significantly thinner than the 180 mil overlay needed for flexible composite designs on heavily traffic roads that we're probably more familiar with. CD226 is much more specific about the asphalt binder course mixtures permitted on top of RCC. This layer can only be EME2 or a clause 943 performance hot rolled mixture, essentially a 3514 HRA type F surface course, but naturally unchipped. The use of EME in the overlay will be more restrictive for the surface course. The thinnest you can go with EME2 is the 10 mil product at 60 mil nominal, which leaves us with 30 mil for the surface course, meaning a 6 mil or more probably a 10 mil thin surfacing on top. Go with HRA and that opens the choice for surface course back up to 14 mil thin surfacings. From a practical asphalt paving perspective, a 50 mil layer of clause 943 HRA does look more attractive. It remains to be seen where RCC sits on lower volume roads where the design loading is less than 80 million standard axles. 
which under CD226 don't need a bound foundation with options like fully flexible pavements. Any use of RCC on these roads would currently mean the added expense and complication of using a bound foundation. Although, as with fully flexible and flexible composite pavements, a bound foundation does make for thinner structural layers on top. Buildability and cost will decide how this pans out, unless and until an option for RCC on an unbound class 2 foundation is developed. The work carried out to produce the RCC design curves in CD226 used analytical pavement design methods to determine the required thickness. The analytical method uses a multi-layer linear elastic model to calculate the horizontal tensile stress at the bottom of the RCC layer generated under the standard 40 kilonewton wheel load we use in UK pavement design. The model incorporates 90 mil of asphalt overlay and either a class three or a class four foundation. The basis for the design is controlling tensile cracking at the bottom of the RCC layer. The tensile strength of the RCC is taken as 10% of the compressive strength, i.e. five megapascals. And this was verified in the research that took place in preparing the design methodology that sits behind CD226. The multi-layer linear elastic model is then used to calculate the tensile stress at the bottom of the pavement using the input criteria. This in turn gives a stress ratio, which is the induced tensile stress divided by five megapascals. The design life can then be calculated from the following equation based on the stress ratio. So for a long life pavement where it reaches 80 MSA, then you need to be keeping the tensile stress at the bottom of the RCC layer to about one megapascal, which compares with its tensile strength of five, so significantly below that level. The design graph in CD226 uses this modelling to relate RCC thickness to design life. All the designer needs is to decide on the foundation strength and know the traffic loading for the site. SHW1000 series restricts RCC aggregate to crushed rock. Gravel, recycled and secondary aggregates aren't currently permitted, although this may change as more experience is gained with RCC. To achieve 50 newton cube strength, RCC typically requires about 10% of ordinary Portland cement. But 1000 series also sets a minimum cement content of 275 kilograms per meter cubed, which is a more conventional concrete requirement and not something you'll find with CBGMs. For a typical RCC mix, this equates to about 13% OPC by mass. The nominal aggregate size of RCC is either 20 or 14 millimetres. The choice may depend on the desired surface finish for the end application. So if you wanted to use the RCC as a running surface on an industrial pavement, then you'd probably choose 14 millimetre stone. The mixture is quite fine graded and is specified in terms of the aggregate grading and not on the total mixture with cement. 20 mil RCC is noticeably finer than an SHW800 series CBGM mix. And due to the smaller aggregate size, fine grading and, and high cement content, a well-designed RCC shouldn't suffer from segregation. Being a relatively stiff zero slump mixture, RCC needs to be put through a forced action mixer plant. These are widely available from CBGM works, but the difference is that the RCC plant must be capable of maintaining high outputs at a much higher cement content than CBGM. A big RCC plant is capable of about 400 tonnes per hour, 
but still fully mobile and can be set up in a relatively small area on site. The restriction is really the stocking area for aggregates to feed the plant and, and not the area that's required for the plant itself. So here you can see the aggregate feed end of a mobile plant with the vertical cement silo behind. Coarse aggregate is fed on one side and fine aggregate on the other side of a split hopper. Here you see the control cabin and the belt taking the mixed RCC to a dumper, which is being used because the plant is directly beside the laying site. A great advantage of RCC is that it can be paver laid like CBGM. The thickness and general stiffness of the material means that the paver needs to be powerful and fitted with a double tamping high compaction screed. Compaction out the back of the paver should be of the order of 90%, meaning that some rolling is still necessary. The choice of rollers and more generally finishing depends on the end application. For highways as a base material, this means steel tandem rollers, minimum six tonnes, probably combined with a pneumatic tarred roller, which helps tighten up the surface. And a PTR is definitely necessary if you're going to use the surface as an industrial pavement for running heavy vehicles on. So in conclusion, it's economics and buildability that will decide the uptake of RCC in new build highway works. With the main structural layer being laid in a single lift with relatively standard paving equipment and a 50% reduction in asphalt overlay compared to flexible composite pavements, then the attraction is clear. In addition, since RCC can be produced on the same mobile plant, potentially already on site to mix the CBGM foundation layer, then the future for RCC does look positive. Thanks for listening.